This motherboard has burned extremely. The fuse has busted so badly that they got apart from each other. This is a ZNR installed here. Let's remove its cover. It has completely burst from the inside. And this is the reason you are seeing this blackness on the motherboard. I am cleaning the blackness using petrol. The blackness of the motherboard has been removed. 4 to 5 ZNRs are installed in this motherboard. I have removed these two ZNRs also. So let's check whether they are good or bad. Physically they seem to be fine. Set the multimeter to ohmmeter. As I have placed the probes on the ZNR, it shows no reading on the multimeter. Whenever one of the ZNR bursts in the motherboard, the chances are that the ZNR that seems to be good could also be faulty inside the motherboard. But the chance is that it could be good. Now, when I am checking the second ZNR, it shows a reading, which is 6.8 ohms. This physically good looking ZNR is completely bad. If I install it again in the motherboard, it will make a short circuit. This ZNR has chances to be good. But this other has no chances. I have changed all the damaged parts in this motherboard. The fuse and the ZNRs. You can see a DSA is installed here in the motherboard, which is used for surge protection. If any heavy fluctuation happens in the electricity, it grounds that fluctuation. It was completely busted. I have changed it. This fuse over here has heated up, but it has not been busted. The SMPS of this motherboard seems to be fine. Now I will pass electricity through it. The electricity is flowing through the motherboard. I will rotate the motherboard. The LED light of this motherboard has not turned on. Off the camera I have worked on this motherboard and tried to find its fault. I will explain to you the important things in this motherboard. This capacitor 117 seems to be faulty. I will test it on continuity mode. I can hear the beep sound on the multimeter while checking this capacitor. When I place the probes on this capacitor, no beep is heard from the multimeter. I am checking this capacitor on the top. It is also fine. This cap is for 5 volts. This is for 12 volts. And this capacitor is installed for 15 volts. The 15 volts are used for bootstrapping. Basically used for the IPM. This is the compressor IPM, and this other IPM is used to operate the DC blower motor in the outdoor unit. Now when I follow the traces of the 15 volts, an IGBT driver is installed here. This IC drives both these two IGBTs. The 15 volts flow towards this capacitor. And then towards the fourth number pin of the IC. Let's check this capacitor. This capacitor shows continuity. Checking it with this point as well. And now from the other side. The problem could be present here. These 15 volts are flowing toward the main compressor IPM. With the capacitor, a diode is also installed. So let's check this capacitor. The multimeter beeps through this capacitor as well. This capacitor also beeps. Let me show you. This trace of 15 volts is causing the problem in the PCB. Other than that, I found no issue with the rest of the voltages. I have removed this capacitor, this IC, off the camera. And I have removed a lot of capacitors from this motherboard. But the fault was not found. But after quite checking, I have identified the problem. The problem is near the IPM. The diode shows zero voltage drop on the diode mode and the capacitor. They will beep on continuity mode. Now I am desoldering this diode. The diode has been removed. Now I am checking the diode after removing it from the motherboard. It still shows zero voltage drop. Now let me show you the capacitor. I will check it on continuity mode. Now the capacitor is not making any beep. Now I am installing a new diode. I will still check the new diode. 
the voltage drop across the diode is 0.382 volts. Now it is confirmed that the diode is also fine. Now I will pass electricity through it. See, the LED light of the motherboard is blinking. As the sensors are not installed with the motherboard, that is why it means that it is showing an error code. I have noticed one thing the relay of the motherboard has not switched on. It should have been switched on. It would have made clear that the motherboard was fine. I will check the required voltages on the IPM. Put the positive probe on the positive and negative on the negative point of the IPM. 325 DC volts are flowing here. It means it is fine. Next, I am checking the voltages on you. 2 volts are passing and then disappearing. The same is on the VNW as well. It means that the SMPS has an issue. Now I am checking the voltages on the SMPS capacitors. 2 volts are fluctuating through this capacitor. The same is on the second capacitor. We should get 5 volts on this capacitor. But it is the same as the rest of the capacitors. Now I am checking the voltages on the bridge rectifier. 324 DC volts are passing here. Now let's check the voltages between the chopper and the switching IC. No volts are passing over here. I am confused about how it is turning on and off. I will check it with the negative point. We are getting 324 volts with negative. The problem is in the SMPS, I think so. Off the camera, I worked on the PCB, I didn't find any problem with the SMPS. All the components of the SMPS are fine. I have investigated the motherboard under the microscope. This C55 capacitor has busted. I found it under the microscope. The EPRAM could also be faulty. I have installed a new EPRAM in this motherboard and programmed it. I have also changed the busted SMD ceramic capacitor. The motherboard is still having the same problem. The LED light blinks, which means it still has a fluctuation. Now for testing and fixing it. I have desoldered the IPM. And still, the problem exists. Now to further find the problem. I have disconnected the outputs coming out from the SMPS. This is the 5 volt trace. This is the 15 volts trace. This trace was going toward the fan IPM. I have disconnected these points to check if the SMPS has any issues. Now the voltages of this motherboard have been stabled. But before showing you the voltages, let me show how it got stabled. You can see this area of the motherboard over here. Reference voltages are given here, which are given through precision programmable reference. This is TL431. I have changed this component. I have also changed its optocoupler as well as this capacitor. The diode was seemingly fine, but still, I changed them. Now let's turn on the motherboard and check the voltages. First of all, I will check the voltages on this capacitor. 14.82 volts are passing through this capacitor. The second capacitor has 11.83 volts. And 5 volts pass through this capacitor. Now you can see the LED light of the motherboard is stable. The relay has switched on now. This means I have successfully fixed this burned motherboard. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. It's free. Thank you.